Hello, how are you? Good. Could you talk a bit about today's flight? Yeah, we, uh, we have 250 kilometer race today. We're, we're worried that we might have a lot of high cloud, but it looks like we, good luck, we haven't got the high cloud. So we have blue conditions. A little bit of cumulus on the mountains, maybe as high as 3,000 meters, but we expect to be able to start flying at one o'clock at local time, and the start gate should open about 2.30, and we're looking forward to a really good race today. Good, and the task is? Uh, the task is, first of all, to the east, to, to towards Font Romo, on the eastern end of Sidania Valley, and then we go all the way to the west, past the Sort Valley, to Peak Survey, which is right on the, uh, in between Sort and Pont de Suer. And from there, then we come back, and I think we go to Col Canto, which is a little bit to the south, trying to remember, and then back to Font Romo for the final glide. Perfect, and let's see what happens. Okay. was Celsius yesterday, so let's see with him. Hi Lucas, how are you today? Fine. So could you tell us a bit about yesterday flight? Uh, yesterday it was very difficult flight, in difficult weather. So all the day, sometimes we, we, could, we could find uh, normal thermals, but uh, normally it was not, uh, it was very tur turbulent, uh, small bubbles, and it was a good lesson for me of mountain flying. Conditions for today's race were excellent with a strong south wind, broken but strong thermals up to three and a half thousand meters on the high mountains and good visibility and uh, we were able to get away with a really good start. Most people climbed up to 3,000 meters or more before the start and descended back and came into the start zone in a very orderly fashion and as we can see here, Mike Delta climbing, getting away first, and everybody making a good start. Well, it's, it's a little bit too much energy available for some people, and one or two were a little bit fast at the start, but they only got quite small penalties for this. And we can see that uh, uh, there was a thermal just after the start, and one or two of the competitors tried this, but very quickly rejected it, because it was two choices, to go left, onto the Pic Pedro and climb back up to 3,000 meters before taking the first leg to the first turning point. Or you could take a lower route and run on the ridges along the south faces of the ridges on the north side of the valley going to, for, to uh, Mont Louis. And the first climb on Pic Pedro went really well. But we can see that Graham Parker chose the low route to take the ridges to run to the first turning point. Good ridge lift, but which would be most efficient? And running into the turning point, everybody had climbed really high except Graham, who took the turning point and was running back along the ridges. But we can see that he's 1,500 meters lower, and he didn't really recover from that because he didn't get a, a good enough climb at the end. After the first turn where the majority of competitors went round quickly, led by Sebastian and Mike and Maximilian, their good altitude, 2,500 to 3,500 meters, they cruised back mostly together to climb on the end of the Carlit near the Puy-Moron Valley. And the climb was not bad. They climbed quite well back up to 3,500 feet. Uh, everybody was pretty close together and in touch, and it looked like we were in for quite a close race at this point, with nobody getting away. You can see the cumulus that they had over the Puymoron Valley, very good conditions, but these conditions didn't last the entire race. The second part of the race was quite a lot different. The climb to take after the Puymoron Valley 
was quite a good climb. And we can see the Sebastian climbed up to 3.8, and we have the several people now up at 3,700 meters. Mike and Gilles Navas went off to the north to get a, back up to a high altitude, but they didn't really work for them, and they had to come back, it got stuck. Thomas and Didier and Gilles are running together, trying to chase Maximilian and Sebastian, who are running away ahead. They got very high, and coming up to the Valley of Andorra, they were well ahead, but what nobody really noticed was Peter and Tilo. Peter and Tilo were running way to the south, and they took a lower route along to the south all the time without much deviation of track. By the time Sebastian got to Saloria, Maximilian and Louis had caught him, and they were all together. The good lift around Saloria area brought them back up to 3,700 meters, and they were able to run down the ridge towards the Sort Valley before crossing over to the Montsenne Mountain. And the climb here was critical to give them a very clean run across and be able to climb high. It was slowly opening out now with Sebastian, Louis, and Maximilian pulling ahead, but all the time, Tilo and Peter Temple were pushing on and pushing on, always a little bit lower, but always a little bit faster. Now it's going to be very interesting to see what route they take. Peter took some altitude, and Tilo took some altitude to cross over the Sort Valley, and we can see the options that they could take. And they needed to climb, get onto Monsene as as with as good an altitude as they, as they are able in order not to have to climb on Monsene because the thermals would probably be very turbulent there. But the, as they went on past the Monsene mountain, they started to come back together again and climb up to get a, a good position and the little group stayed together all the way to the turning point. So having crossed back over the Sort Valley, coming on to the Lorry Mountain, right next to the Col de Canto turning point. And it's really a good place to get good altitude. And we saw that they were able to come round into the turning point and through really quickly, but then climbed after the turning point. And Peter Temple was, was in company with Sebastian and the other group, but Max, Louis, and Sebastian chose to go north, and Peter went on track. And Peter was running on track, but Tilo had already gone. Tilo had already gone through the turning point, and Tilo was now running actually straight on track, much lower, down at 2,200 meters, nearly 1,000 meters lower and he was running on track to get into the next leg. We can see the conditions at Larabasa. They had wave cloud on the top and cumulus underneath. The little group with Sebastian, Louis, and Max climbed, and they came onto Monsene, and they moved on to, Car on to Carabasa, and they climbed here to well above glide angle. In the meantime, what they didn't realize is we can see Tilo actually pushing really hard. He's flying at 1,800, 1,700 meters along the ridge lift all the way into the turning point. The Sebastian group, they took quite a lot of altitude and they were able to run on over the top. Peter didn't take the altitude and so he was very soon caught by Louis. Louis, who had taken the extra couple of hundred meters there, passed Peter just before the turning point and we can see also Sebastian who took an extra turn was very quickly catching Max and he overtook Max on the way into the turn. You c he was flying just that little bit faster and once he'd passed Max, Max was never able to get, it, to get back, he was never able to push fast enough and they flew the rest of the, fly of the, the uh, final glide together. It, it, whilst this was going into the, second, into the last turning point, Tilo was finishing. Tilo was well ahead, he was really pushing hard, he was flying 240 kilometers an hour, low along the ridges in good energy, and finishing four or five minutes before anybody else. We can see Sebastian passing Max in the end, and Max never really got that back. Sebastian was always flying 
15, 20 kilometers an hour faster. He had a, just a little bit of extra height. Coming in for the final, we had uh, Tilo first, Louis was second, Peter Temple came in third, excellent fight for Peter, and then Sebastian, and then Maximilian Zeiss. Of course, there were some penalties for the start, and there were some penalties for the finish. So the final positions you can pick up on the SGP website and just look under results. The great days flying, that's it. Results you can see. So, what a wise congratulation, Tilo. Thank you, Claire. I was lucky enough that I just arrived over the mountain ridge. It was, again, extreme turbulent um, um, thermals, but I could make it almost to cloud base. And, um, and then I saw that the others, um, Sebastian and, um, uh, and the others, they flew a little bit to the right, and I took the back road behind here. Um, it worked okay and I always kept pushing 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 and uh, at the end I was fairly low just made it over the uh, um, over the mountains and found after some search and I found four meters which brought me easily to the turn point where I met the others again um, and then this was uh, the key decision I decided to simply fly straight home which was kind of scary <laughs> because uh, the ridge were good but not very good and I had I started with 12, 1300 meters missing and always pulled, pulled and it was 1000 meters and even at the turn point I still had 200 meters missing and I was so lucky that the turn point was low enough so I was just flying around these um, mirrors over there and fortunately all the way coming to the airfield uh, that was good, good lift which brought me to final glide and now I'm here, I'm very happy. How was your flight? Uh, it was pretty good. It had its moments. I got a bit low at one spot, but uh, managed to recover from that and uh, got a good result, I hope. So, penalties aside. <laughs>